Hey, what's happening, YouTube, Reddit, or any random person, whatever, just watching this video? Uh, this is a week update on my uh, 40 gallon Aquascape. Um, as I said last week, I wasn't quite done with it. I still had a lot to do, and I still do have more to do. But if you've watched the last video, you'll already notice a huge difference in just a week. Uh, so far, I've had no plants uh, die on me. Um, and I've done quite a few culture tissue plants. If they're gonna, you know, crap out on you, it usually starts happening pretty quick. I do have one that looks a little, a little worried about that, but I'll clip off a couple of the dead leaves. But everything else seems to be going swimmingly. Um, I've uh, added uh, some plants. So these tall ones are called Temple uh, Compacta. And uh, just so you know, if I mispronounce any of these ridiculous names for plants. It's unintentional. I'm not trying to insult the plants. It's just, why do they got to give them such difficult names? I, I, I don't get it. Anyway, so um, I've added several uh, Temple Compacta. Um, that's what these tall ones are. And these will eventually grow uh, immersed. So they'll come out of the top of the tank and grow these uh, little purple, whitish uh, flowers. Uh, that's what I really like about those. Um, I've got every crypt that you can think of in here right now, except for the uh, uh, flamingo crypts. But I've got uh, winty green crypts here. Uh, here, these are huge bushes of uh, parva crypts. Um, that's red undulata, red undulata, red undulata. Um, and then this really pink stuff, there's some more you know, purplish stuff back there that's... Um, uh, Cardellinus, I don't know, Cardellinus, something. Anyway, tall bushy plants. I, I, I research them, but I really don't care if I pronounce the names of the plants correctly. I just need to know if I'm taking care of them correctly. And uh, over here is uh, some uh, Anubius congenit, congenus, congenus. Anyway, I know how to take care of these two, even without being able to pronounce the name correctly. Uh, these don't like to be buried in substrate. Uh, they cling on to things uh, out in the wild, so they would grip on to like rock or floating wood, and they grab their nutrients out of the water column, um, as opposed to uh, these other plants here, like the uh, repens and the green cardinals back there, that thrive mostly off of nutrients coming out of the substrate and through photosynthesis. photosynthesis. Um, they do it slightly different. They get it out of the water column and a small amount of photosynthesis. So that makes them, you know, slow growers. But this one right here can get huge, you know. Uh, it's going to take a long time, but within a year, it should have that dragon stone just completely gripped like a fist. Um, you know, so I am I check the water every day. I'm not letting anything die on me. Oh, yeah, and then there's this these random little grass patches there. Um that's called uh, Littorella uniflora. Yeah, there we go. Anyway, it's a tiny foreground plant. Yes, this is about as big as it gets. It's just grass, but eventually they will throw runners and they'll all connect and they'll just be one long line of grass here in the front and everything gradually gets taller and taller into the back. And when I get ready to put these fish in, I just want this to be just an awesome, you know, Amazonian, you know, jungle you know over here of just copious amounts of plants to swim through and weave in and out some open space here if they want free swim and then everything over here it's all going to be uh just foreground plants so i'm going to keep the plants shallow you know so there's just kind of like a 90 degree angle uh depth to this um i want the fish to feel like they have plenty of room and plenty of stuff to look at and they got their own personal piece of you know, nature um, that I created to the best of my ability, you know, and uh, yeah, there's something here uh, that they don't have out in the wild, and that's fear, constant fear that something is going to eat them. So, um, anyway, I'm still thinking on, on some fish ideas, but I'm going to get something, I don't know, I don't know what I'm going to get, but I'm going to make sure it's perfect for this. But this is the update on the tank. Enjoy. Um, it's it's been eight days. I'm still proud of it. I haven't killed anything yet. And with tissue culture plants, you you know pretty quickly if things are going south. Oh, by the way, 
if you look in here, there's some random bulbs. Uh, these are all uh, a puntagen ovaceous. I have about a 50% rate uh, ratio on the chances of them actually growing because I bought them several times. So I leave them in for two weeks. If they don't sprout a little green nugget like you see right there on the top, then I toss it. So I, that's why there's so many is because I know a couple are going to be duds and I got to get rid of them. But uh, another one back over here is also sprouted the a green stem and uh, those will blow up. Those grow super fast. Um, but here's a top view. Yeah. All right. That's what I'm talking about. Killing it, dog. Killing it. You guys enjoy the video. If you have any questions, you know, I mean, I can answer anything about this tank and plants um, in general. That's what I spent the most of my studying on when I started this hobby is that, you know, it all starts with, with, with plants. You know, uh, get everything perfect with the plants and then start with the fish, you know. Um, so, yeah, I mean, take some time and patience. I still have to wait probably another month or two before I can put any fish in here because I want this to be completely full. But there has been some growth. The Amazon sword has grown like an inch since last week. So um, I know this video is a little bit longer and I'm not really giving any advice on anything except for the fact that I'm just kind of giving an update. But that doesn't mean you can't ask questions. Um, people are watching the video. So if you're curious and you're like, wow, that looks awesome. I want to know how you did that plant. Or I, I want to know how this plant grows. Or, you know, what does the pH level need to be in here? What does the KH level need to be in here? I mean, just, uh, you know, all, all kinds of stuff. Temperature, you know. Uh, I don't need two heaters. These are both 40-gallon uh, heaters. I put two in there because, well, you know, if they don't have to work as hard, then uh, they last longer, you know, uh, backup, you know, you got two of them, then they don't have to turn on as frequently because it's easier for them to keep the water hot. And if one fails on you and does break, I'm not in a panic to go, you know, get another heater while all of a sudden my plants start freezing to death. You know, I live in Minnesota, so, uh, you know, it's cold and I'm in the basement and, you know, it's, it gets like 50 degrees in here and I... Don't have anything that can thrive in 50 degrees. These are all tropical plants from uh, uh, West, Afri West Africa's uh, largest area, um, you know, but some places um, in Egypt as well. And um, anyway, I've got facts about all this stuff. If you want to know, just ask. All right, one last look. Ooh, there we go. All right. Yeah. All right, thanks everyone for watching. Oh, and thanks for the seven new subscribers. Cool, that's amazing. I don't know where you came from, but hey, guys, keep watching. You know, I'll, I'll make sure that every time you have a video to watch, there's something interesting to look at than just my mug. All right, enjoy.